Hey everybody, welcome to the Lennon Stand. I'm Lennon, and today's show is all going to be about colour. Now, the very first experiment's all going to be about using colour to describe how water moves. And the second experiment is going to be less of an experiment and more of an arts and crafts project. We're going to be dissecting a bit of a flower, we're going to be laying it out on a beautiful piece of paper, and we're going to be making a beautiful petal bomb. Now, we'll see how we can do that at the very end of the show. But first, we're going to describe how water flows using water, uh, colour in the water. So, we have our green cup that's full of cold water, and we have our blue cup that's also full of cold water. Now, the plan for the experiment is that we're going to cover one of these cups and put it upside down on top of the other one. Now, I'm going to do that quickly, hopefully without spilling as much water as I might hope. Ah. Now, we have our two cups aligned. I've lost almost all my water, but we still have some left. So I think this is a win. And we're going to ask ourselves again, what's going to happen? Is the water in the top cup going to just sit there? Is it going to flood into the blue cup and mix perfectly? Or maybe something else will happen. Maybe they'll just sit there. They'll defy gravity from mixing and they'll just sit on top of one another. Now, because we're scientists and instead of just doing guesses, we like to experiment. I'm going to release this bit of cardboard and we're going to see what's going to happen. In three, two, one. Oh. So we saw then, and we may have even heard, the water flowing out of the top cup into the bottom cup and mixing through perfectly to mix the green and the blue to make a more green liquid. Now, if I lift this quickly down into my pocket bucket we now have our two cups empty and we'll fill up one of these cups again full of cold water that I've just had sitting next to me and we'll try to top it up all the way to the tippy tippy top and now we have a blue food dye that we're going to drop into the top of it so then we know that we call it cold because blue yeah blue is a pretty cold color much colder than red or green and now I have a cup of warm water sitting over to the side that's filled with red now it even looks like hot water doesn't it with all the red in it and all the steam coming off it and it's just a little bit overflowing now I grab one more piece of card. We're going to put it on top of our warm water. And I'm going to cover my hand with something, just in case the water is a little bit too hot. And we're going to once again turn our cup and put it upside down on top of the blue water. We're going to ask ourselves again what is going to happen. So if I can hold this properly. I'll turn this upside down so we won't lose much water. And we're going to get it nice and properly sitting on top. So we lost much less water than before, and which is really good because this water's hot, so it may have burnt myself a little bit. So if we are to trial this experiment at home, make sure we do it with a trusted adult or a parent so then they can handle the hot water nice and safely. So once again, we're going to ask ourselves what is going to happen. Last time we saw the cold water mix perfectly in between the two cups. This time will the same thing happen or maybe the red cup. The red water may sit perfectly on top of the blue water. Well just like before as we're scientists we like to experiment. So I'm going to remove our piece of paper in three, two, one. The anticipation. 
So we see that it's very gently mixing. We can still see a very distinctive blue surface, a blue full cup over here. And the red cup is very slowly getting more and more blue into it. So what we have happening here is actually called convection. Now convection is one of the three methods of heat transfer where we have radiation, conduction, and convection. Now radiation is like from a light source. So if we go out into the sun and we stand out in the sun's rays, we'll be bathing in the beautiful glow of the sun, we'll be feeling extremely warm from it, but there's nothing touching us. There's not the, the air is a little bit warm, but we're not getting much from that. We're getting all the heat from our beautiful sun. That is what we call radiation. Now conduction is when we touch something hot or touch something cold, we feel that with our fingertips as it transfers the heat from the surface of the thing that we're touching onto our fingertips, we'll then feel that heat. Now some things transfer and conduct a little bit better, like metal um, compared to plastic, but everything conducts heat ever so little. And the last transfer of heat is through convection, which is a very special way of saying that hot air rises and cold air sinks. So we have here convection happening, where the hot air is trying to rise up to the very top where we already have it, and the cold air is very happy sitting down here in the bottom. So it's like when we jump into a cold dam, the nice warm water on top of our pool um, keeps us nice and warm, but if we go down too deep, we'll start to freeze a little bit. But if we were to do this the other way around, with our warm water on the bottom, it would be able to convect very easily. Now this system won't stay exactly how it is forever, where the warm water will eventually conduct with the surface of the cold water, and they'll both become the same colour, coming about blacky, because it's a bit weird, uh, the red and the blue combining. But for now, it's going to sit just like this for quite some time. So I'm going to put this over to the side so we can watch as we continue the rest of our experiment exactly what's going to happen. Now, because I spilt a bit of water before, I'm going to quickly make a little bit of space because our next experiment requires a very dry area. Now, we're going to be making a petal bomb. So I have here some beautiful wildflowers here at Discovery. I have a capeweed, a beautiful yellow, almost daisy looking flower. And it is quite stunning. Now the plan with it is that we're going to rip off the individual petals very gently to be careful not to rip it in half like I just did then. And we're going to position our petals around our plant so then we can see exactly the way the flower forms its shape. I also have a beautiful orange flower. I'm not quite sure what the name is. If anybody knows, feel free to correct me in the description below. And the aim of the game is to rip tiny little bits, starting from the back of the flower, uh, petals off, so then we can then use some very simple bits of PVA glue to glue bits of our petals not quite like this onto our piece of paper and then we can have a beautiful bit of arts and crafts now we can do this with our parents where they can give us a hand separating the petals from our flower or we could perhaps do it all by ourselves. I think that's pretty achievable. Now, it's not quite meant to look like this. It's meant to have our petals separated across our flower as we arrange them very beautifully. Now, I'm not the best at arts and crafts, but I'd love to see any of your submissions in the comments section below, because I love seeing anything that you guys make at home. So sort of a little bit like this, we're going to have our flowers get it around it. But when we work 
hard enough to separate all our flowers together, we can create a big beautiful picture, like I have done here earlier, of a magnificent wattle branch. We can see here the flowers separate, uh, being the yellow flower bits in the middle, and we have our leaves surrounding all the way on the outside of it. I'm very proud of this creation. I think it looks very beautiful. And I can't wait to see any creations that you guys make at home. So with this, it concludes the linen stand today. And we'll see that our hot and cold water is still uncombined. So what we'll do is I'll move our pieces of paper away from our wet water. And what we'll do is we'll turn it upside down. We'll see that all the cold water mixes very easily with the hot water. Now if I don't spill it all over the place, we will have a very odd colour mixing the red and the blue. So thank you very much for your time today. I hope you've enjoyed the linen stand this time and I hope we all have a marvellous time creating some flowers at home and I hope we have a lot of fun also creating water mixing with water. Thank you very much and I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend.